And we're live. Welcome everybody to Polite and Very Fine Lives for a very special episode this evening. We're so, so excited. Uh, and I'm gonna let Bex explain to you oh my gosh. the fun that's gonna happen tonight. Seriously, you guys, I'm so excited for this because we both love wine, but like, we're just gonna like be honest with you. We don't really know that much about it, <laughs> right? So we are really, really excited because we have, we're calling it Wine 101 with Melissa. So Melissa, I actually had the pleasure of meeting in Toronto in August and I we went out for dinner and I found out that she literally, her job is like tasting wine. Like how cool is that you guys? So she is gonna come on tonight with us. She'll give you like the down low of everything that she's gonna cover, but we are so excited because we are gonna taste some wines and like learn how to properly do it. So without a do, we're bringing in Miss Melissa. Or sorry, this Which way. Which side? Take two, one. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous, so <laughs> That's okay. bear with me here. But uh, yeah, before we get started, I just have to make a little disclaimer. So um, the views expressed here are mine and mine alone, and they do not represent um, my employer. So that being said, we're good to go. Are you ladies ready to get started? Oh my gosh. All right, who's got their wine? <laughs> I'm, I'm opening mine right now. Perfect. Oh, I have a nice. Cool opener here. Oh, oh yeah, look at that, baby. <laughs> Tonight I am drinking a Pinot Grigio. Uh, Very nice. A Voga Italian. A nice Italian Pinot Grigio. Yes, I am familiar with that one. Okay. Um, I have something called Carnivore. Carnivore. Actually, I've had that one. Nice. California <laughs> Cap Seb. Yeah, that very nice. Good. So is that your typical go-to? You like the the cab sab and you you're a Pinot yeah. Grigio girl? I love I love Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Okay, good to know. All right, so what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start right from like the very beginning. What the heck is wine? So what is wine? So <laughs> basically wine is an alcoholic beverage made from um, fermented grape juice. And wine can also be made from um, other fruits. You'll see maybe some pear wine, blueberry wine, cranberry wine, but for the most part, it's made from um, fermented grape juice. Um, and the grapes are not your normal table grapes. They're much smaller and, and much sweeter and completely different from the ones you get from the grocery store. Um, <laughs> wine, actually, I am not um, a history buff or geography buff, which is kind of funny because there's tons of that involved with wine. Um, so I'm just going to touch base very, very quickly on the history of wine and actually dates back to um, 4000 BC. What? So, yeah, yeah. So the earliest evidence um, of wine cultivation was, yeah, 4000 BC. And um, the Greeks actually introduced wine to France. So most people probably think wine came from France. It didn't. Um, <laughs> the, Greeks, the Greeks introduced wine to France in about 600 BC. So yeah, that's my little Who knew? Little, little history thing for today. Yes, oh, I can picture <laughs> like the show Outlander and then walking around with their like drinks. They're like yeah. that wine, a port or whatever they. <laughs> <laughs> See, wine's been around forever. Like it's crazy. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, been a part of culture throughout history. You know, it's always been part of like dinners, like food and wine. It's just that's that's just a thing, right? So cool. Um, so yeah, there's my history lesson for today. Um, so one bottle, one bottle equals how many glasses do you guys think? Four. We'll do some little wine facts. Four. Six. It's <laughs> standard, standard serving size is five, but yeah, it all depends on how much you're pouring in a glass, right? But the standard is um, 150 mils. So yeah, five glasses in a bottle. <laughs> And more like more like us, <laughs> not a <about that>, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, five glasses in a bottle, and um, that's about 150 calories. To those of you who are curious, about 150 mm -hmm. calories per glass if Perfect. you're serving. The cap. Yep. So, <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, hey. I said, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to put that in your my fitness pal. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> um. And then a little fun fact. So if you were to drink uh, one glass of wine every night for your entire um, adult life, 
that's about 4,000 bottles of wine you'll drink throughout your life. And I was, I was, um, <laughs> I was talking to a coworker today and we're like, we're way past that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. If that's your job, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> actually tomorrow I have a, an, an entire day of tasting. That's not my entire job. I'm not really going to talk about that here, but I do have these days where I go and, and I taste like a hundred products um, in a day. But I so, do want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's hard. It's not fun. It's hard. It's Is so it? hard. So what do you do to cleanse your palate between? Water. Water or bread or crackers, just something very, very bland. So yeah. So that being said, then let's get into how to taste. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Right, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So <laughs> I need to sip, but that's okay. Oh, that's okay. We're we're just gonna we don't have to do it like super proper. I'll just talk to you about how to do it proper. <laughs> um, so before every tasting, um, we need to set up and we need to make sure that certain conditions are met. Um, and the first thing is you want to make sure you have good lighting and you want to have a white background. So that's where <laughs> that's where I was talking about just having like a piece of paper. Yeah, there we go. You ladies are ready. <laughs> um, spittoons. So tonight, I don't think we have spittoons. <laughs> but when I, I go to that. When I what, what is a spittoon? So basically, a spittoon is like a cup that you're gonna spit into. So when you go, when you're doing a proper tasting, like I said, I taste like a hundred products at a time. There's no freaking way that I'm gonna be able to actually sit there and like drink a hundred yeah. bottles or a hundred yeah. glasses of wine or whatever, right? So we have yeah. to use spittoons. Um, and when you go to like a winery, when you do a wine tour, um, they also have spittoons there as well and never feel like you're being rude. They know that that is a professional way to taste. So you, you never have to feel like you have to taste everything that they've laid out for you. Cause when you leave those places, you leave a little tipsy, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can always ask for the spittoons. Uh, so yeah, good lighting, white background, your spittoons, um, cause we're going to spit forwards and not backwards. And I always laugh at that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really I, Yeah. I don't know who made that up, but yeah, that's what they teach us. Spit forwards, not backwards. So yeah, <laughs> let's just go with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, you asked me about how do you cleanse your palate? So water, crackers, bread, just something very bland and plain. Cause you don't want it to, um, interfere with your, your palate. Um, and then normally when we do tastings, we use um, an ISO glass, which is much smaller than our glasses. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, this is a uh, industry standard tasting size. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just pretend we're using those today. Um, and then also very important, you want it to be an odor free zone. So perfumes, um, <laughs> Like stinky foods, garlic, things like that. They 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 will interfere with with your um, experience uh, and a proper assessment. But don't worry, like I said, don't worry about that tonight. But yeah, so those are um, the conditions. And now that we're all set up, let's go. But can we just so, cheers to this all first? Because this is really cheers. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I am drinking a Spanish wine. A Rioja, it's a hundred percent Tempranillo. I probably said that wrong. I'm the worst when it comes to pronouncing things. <laughs> okay, let's talk, let's talk about this thing here. What, oh, what, yeah. what are we doing? Sorry. I'll walk no, you I, 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 see, I see people do it all the time and I'm always like, it makes me feel professional. So yeah. I just do it for funsies. I feel like you're gonna spill that big it, it is fun though, yeah. <laughs> So I'll, I'll walk you through the tasting. That's basically okay. to um, release the aromas, but let's just do a quick cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thanks for our viewers for joining us tonight on this wonderful mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I don't know how I didn't know you ladies do this because this is freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? So much yeah. fun. Doing a live and drinking wine. And we, when we started this, we're like, well, we talk all the time and we're having a glass of wine. Let's just do it online. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Really do it, but. <laughs> so what do you guys normally talk about? Just life? Just whatever? <laughs> Everything, anything that you can think of. We're kind of just do like just real life topics. Sometimes we talk about the hard stuff. We do the fun stuff. We did a whole bunch of stuff at Christmas. Like just kind of anything. Ah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's go. So um, I'm losing my notes here. <laughs> okay, so it's a four-step process when you're tasting. So basically it's look, smell, taste, and finish. Um, or sometimes it's easier to remember see, swirl, smell, and swish. <laughs> Ooh. So, yeah. so the first thing you want to do is um, you, you want to look at it. So that's where your white paper comes, comes in handy. Um, and basically what you're looking at is you're just looking at the color of it. Um, you're checking to see if it's um, the clarity of it. So sometimes a wine, if it's hazy, that could indicate a fault but we're not gonna really worry about that. Um, so what color does is it gives us clues to a wine's age um, and sometimes the um, grape variety as well. Uh, white wines, pale um, colors typically indicate that the wine's younger. Uh, darker, like golden colors would indicate that the wine is older or it's aged in oak. Um, yeah, oh. yep, there you go. <laughs> uh, for red wines, the deeper the color, the younger it is. If it's like a purple um, ruby hue, that means it's it's a little bit younger. And then as the wine ages, it turns more into like a brick red garnet sort of color. So that's- Really? I, would oh, I need to buy me some old wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also you wanna look, when you're looking, you're looking at the legs. So the legs are the um, the streams that are coming down. So the thicker and the slower, typically, the, the thicker and the slower that happens, that means the higher the alcohol is in the wine. Really? Yes. Yeah, so those are called legs, or sometimes you'll hear um, tears. Tears or legs. <laughs> so like how many times do you swish oh. and then it? Yeah, just swirl it around a couple of times and then just, yeah, just look at the, the sides of the glass and you'll see it slowly dripping down or if it's running really fast and that that could indicate um maybe less alcohol what do we call it the legs legs yep yeah. okay, I got I this legs. next time i go drink wine somewhere i'm gonna be like oh have you checked your legs yet I'm look at the legs yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah so that's so okay. you're looking at clarity color and the legs more or less that's that's what you're looking at so that is step one. So we're done looking. <laughs> now we're gonna get into the swirling and the smelling, or you'll also um, hear people say nosing. So that's basically just smelling the wine. Um, so you wanna gently swirl it. So if you're just getting started, it's probably easier if you have a flat surface when you're swirling it. It's pretty hard to swirl in your hand unless you're a seasoned Is it? <laughs> yeah. Or you can hold it from the bottom sometimes. Oh, to get like a real look, look at you. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find your yeah. I feel like that's easy. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be doing this over my carpet. <laughs> but yeah, flat service, flat service, flat surface. <laughs> so you gently swirl it, and what swirling does is it releases the um, aroma compound. So it kind of yep. <laughs> um, and you can actually learn more from uh, wine's aroma than you'll learn from the actual tasting of it. So, yeah. Really? So, yeah. Nice. And that's because um, our olfactory system is one of our most acute organs. Um, so super, super powerful thing. Uh, and we can detect um, our sense of smell is super sensitive. We can detect like tons of different aromas, whereas our um, our sense of taste is only five. We can only sense five different things, which I'll cover in a second. Um, so yeah, so swirling releases those aromas. And then what you want to do is you want to hold the glass to your nose. Once you've done doing a quick little swirl and you're going to give it like a quick sniff and that's going to prime your nose. <laughs> And then you can swirl it again <laughs> and then sniff longer and slower and kind of hang, hang around in there for a minute. <laughs> um, you know, it might be really difficult at first and yeah, you probably feel absolutely ridiculous and you're like, I smell great. It's like that, that's so what I smell. Right? I'm trying like, to do this at restaurants. Like I know what I'm doing. But I'm, I I'm a professional at this point. I always thought it looked silly, but I feel like maybe I kind of did it right, but I just really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> So what you're what you're looking for really is just just think of common smells. So fruits, floral, vegetal notes, earth, wood, herbal. Um, so typically with white wine, you're gonna obviously you're not gonna get like woody notes unless it's a oak chardonnay. But you're you're gonna get fruity notes and floral notes. And then you could go into 
Um, okay, so what kind of fruit? So you're drinking a Pinot Grigio right now. So yeah. typical note in that, you're probably gonna smell a lot of citrus fruit. Yeah. So then you could say, okay, so what kind of citrus fruit? Is there lemon in there? It's like grapefruity almost. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's that's a citrus note for sure. Yep. <laughs> See, you got it, you got it. Uh, and then for uh, red, you'll get a lot more like of those woody herbal notes, um, a lot of dark fruit. You're drinking a cab, so that's like black cherry, cassis. Um, yeah. yeah, tobacco, cedar. <laughs> <laughs> our, our good friend Terry says, I smell that and I'm wasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a meme about what was there. There was a meme and it made me laugh. This smells like it was someone doing like a proper wine tasting. And then the person's like, this smells like, yeah, I'm getting drunk or something. Yeah, but, yeah this is like dark, like dark fruits. Yeah, exactly. So that's a really yeah. good starting point. And then you can go even deeper once you're. Once like, you're more seasoned, like, but can you grab like a wine that you don't know and like smell it and actually be able to identify most of what's in it? Like, are you? Um, you yeah. Well, that's that's the that's point. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm fascinated by this. How how did you how did you get here? How did you do this? How did you start this job? Um, <laughs> I took a lot of wine courses. Yeah, because um, you love wine. Yeah, you know what? When I first started, I knew absolutely nothing about wine. I was buying box wine. I'll admit it. Like I was, I I knew absolutely nothing about wine, and yeah, I just took an interest in it, and um, just yeah, took a lot of courses, watched a lot of videos. There's, that's just it. Drank a lot of wine, <laughs> and that's here cool. I am. That's yeah, awesome. I love yeah. it. I Good love job. That. Just saying. Okay, so if you guys are ever curious about like different notes that are in the wine, there's something called a wine aroma wheel. Ooh. So you can actually, if you like Google it, you can probably just like download a picture of it or whatever. Um, and that's a really good, good thing to use. And it, the, I don't know if you guys can see it, but like, so it'll start with like basic. So like here it'll be fruity and the, oh, sorry, <laughs> fruity. <laughs> And then it'll go, it'll branch out into citrus fruit, tropical fruit, uh, white berries, and then it'll go even more in depth. So lemon, lime, grapefruit, like you said. Um, just a really handy little thing to have. Um, so that is, oh, I got lost. <laughs> um, that, was step, that was step two, wasn't it? Our, our yes, memory. that was your swirl and, swirl and smell. Um, so then... Even though that is the most important thing, I beg to differ because the next part is, what do we do after we know that? We taste, <laughs> we taste it. it. We taste it, that's right. <laughs> um, so tasting is basically confirming what you've just um, nosed um, because the two are uh, related, which is why you can't um, taste things when you're sick. Oh, yeah. Because you can't smell, so then you can't taste. Right, 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 right. <laughs> They're connected. Um, so the five things that the palate can distinguish are um, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. And umami? <laughs> umami? <laughs> Am I saying that right? I don't know. <laughs> it's, basically it's, yeah, it's basically savory. Um, okay. And there's different areas of your tongue where you'll pick that up. So sweetness is on the tip of your tongue. Uh, sour is on the sides. Bitter is at the back of your tongue. Um, salty is kind of front and sides, and savory is like all across the top. So when you when you have the wine in your mouth, that's where you'll kind of assess and see if you notice, like especially with a um, white wine, see if you pick up um, where it's sweet, like on the tip of your tongue, see if it's sweet. I, I know yours won't be, it's a Pinot Grigio. Um, Okay, so the fun part, we're gonna swish. So you can give it another swirl or, yeah. Like a lot or just a little? <laughs> oh, we're gonna swish a, a, it in a the decent mouth. amount, a, de a oh, decent amount, good. yep. So normally this is where after you do that you spit, but we're not spitting, so go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, you wanna kinda, you want it to coat your entire mouth, right? You mm -hmm. want it to hit all the different areas. Um, 
And it tastes a little different when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we're tasting, what we're we're um, assessing is the sweetness, the acidity, um, tannins, alcohol, body, um, and then the flavor characteristics, which is what we just um, were smelling. Uh, so where did I go with that? Yeah. So do you guys know what acidity is? in a wine or what the term acidity is. So acidity is um, the uh, uh, brightness and freshness in, in a wine. So yeah, it's what makes uh, a wine super food friendly. You'll, the acidity should be high in uh, white wines from cooler climates. Um, yeah, California wines will not have high acidity because it's a warm climate. So they tend to be higher alcohol, lower acidity. Uh, wine from, say, where I'm from, Ontario, is super high acidity because we're a cooler climate. Um, so just, yeah, super high acidity. So acidity is the um, crisp crispness and freshness in a wine. Um, uh, tannins are the chewiness of a wine. So your wine there should have a ton of tannins in it. So that's really? kind of, uh, no, um, best. Right? yeah, oh. yeah. So tannins are um, uh, a chemical that's found in grape skins and also um, in oak barrels. So typically you wouldn't really see that in white wines because they don't have a lot of skin contact when they're um, fermenting. Is that what gives you like that? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's the chewiness, it's the yeah, suck your mouth dry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are tannins. <laughs> okay, because that, is that what you would call like bitter? Like uh, that, yeah, no? yeah, that 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 could be bitter. Yeah, is definitely. It, or is that like more like the dry feeling? No. Sorry. Is that like the dry oh. feeling that you get with a wine, or is that like? Oh, did you lose me? Yeah, I think so. Sorry. Okay, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> is it is that like the dry feeling you get, or is that like the bitter? Yep. Yep. So One tannins the, definitely. Okay. Tannins dry your mouth out. And the higher the tannins, the more they'll suck your mouth dry. Yeah. It's similar that, to that is uh, why I, I don't like red wine for that reason. I, I was just gonna say, and that's probably why you drink white wine. <laughs> and that's why I love red wine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I'm a uh, I love that too. <laughs> um so funny. So yeah, tannins, think about like a tea bag. When you steep a tea for too long, that feeling you get when the tea is like super strong, those yeah, are tannins yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so, in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, body of a wine. So you can think of body um, as in terms of milk. So if it's um, full bodied, it's going to be like a whole milk or a homo milk. If it's medium bodied, it's going to like the weight of it in your mouth is going to be um, like a 2%. And then if it's light body, it'll be like a 1% milk or skim milk. So that's how you can determine whether or not your wine is uh, light, medium, or, or full-bodied. Uh, typically, a Cab Sauv is obviously going to be full-bodied, and a Pinot Grigio is obviously going to be light-bodied, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you guys have total opposite uh, wine styles. <laughs> Cheers to that. And, uh, yeah. It's also important to know when you guys are doing this, when you're tasting, like everybody's palates are, are completely different. And so there's no wrong answers. Wine is like very subjective and it's, it's I whatever. You ask that question. Yeah. So really we can just make something up and be like, yes. Yeah. You you know? <laughs> Cause well. who am I to tell you, you didn't taste that. So yeah. <laughs> I love I mean, that. Like, there's a lot of science behind it, but there's also a lot of whatever you want to make it. <laughs> cool. This is so yeah. yeah. And I'm totally off topic. And where are we? <laughs> That's okay. We were just switching. <laughs> okay. So we were, yeah. So we were swishing. That's right. So, um, yeah. So you wanted to let it cover every part of your mouth. Um, and then. Yeah, remember spitting is not rude. If when you guys are tasting, you can always spit, and <laughs> that actually helps to keep your palate more refreshed, and you're not going to get tired, and you'll be able to assess things better that way. Um, plus, once you start drinking, then yeah. <laughs> and yeah, even yeah. right now, I had a glass with you guys, and I'm like, yeah, I lost what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. That's so the and then what we do. 
We sometimes yeah. all, we were on our lives and all of a sudden we're like 10 miles away talking about something. Yeah. Way <laughs> in another world. Yeah. Um, okay, so we, we swished and we tasted and I could break that down even more, but let's not. So then um, then we'll just do finish. So when, when you're assessing the finish of a wine, it's just basically how long do the flavors stick around? The longer the flavors stick around, typically the higher quality the wine is. Um, white wines, what you're looking for, white wines will fade faster as well, but what you're looking for is um, just a good balance of fruit and acidity, so that crisp, bright freshness um, and alcohol. And then in red wines, you're looking for um, a good balance of fruit, acidity, alcohol, and those tannins. Oh. Yeah, so that is how you assess a wine. I love it. Me too, this is so cool. Yeah. Uh, are you ready for some? Are you ready for some questions? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> let's see if I can answer them. <laughs> okay, so today, guys, uh, we were having a little chat, Melissa, Bex, and I, and uh, she was asking us what kind of wine we were going to be drinking, and I said, "Well, honestly, <laughs> it's going to be a Pinot Grigio, but I don't know what kind. It's whatever the coolest bottle is, because honestly, no joke, that is how I pick my wine." And so I. No, no, I, I see that all the time. I see, I definitely see it all the time. People buy based off of labels and the wine, like the wine world knows that they market to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but my question is, is there something that I should be looking for? Like on a label or like what, what is, what is something that we can be looking for that um, we're not seeing because it's just, you, you walk into the liquor store and it's so intimidating, right? Cause they have all of those like huge wine racks. And I'm like, well, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what would I pick, right? Um, oh, that is a, a good question. How would, that's where learning how to taste would come in handy because through experimenting, you'll also learn what you like and um, every right. read, yeah, and every region has like different styles. So like an Italian Pinot Grigio for the most part is going to not always taste the same. I mean, every winemaker has different styles and they do different things to it. But if you like that, you know, crisp citrusy apple thing and, and you know Italy has that flavor kind of profile going on, then you know you can kind of gravitate to there. Um, whereas like, and that bright acidity. And then whereas like a California Pinot Grigio, and this comes from trial and error from you you tasting different yeah. styles of Pinot Grigio, you would know that the California ones tend to be a little bit more flabby and, and not so bright and, and full of acidity. And you might not like that, or you might like that. And then you would know to kind of, does that make sense? Yeah. Kinda, okay. It's flabby. Mm -mm, that's much too flabby for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, like, you guys are from out west, right? So mm -hmm. I know yeah. in, in our stores uh, here, we have, like, descriptors on on our tags. So that kind of helps you evaluate as well. That yeah, it would tell you, like, like, you like that here in Alberta. No. <laughs> no, it's just, like, whatever. And, yeah. um, okay, so I, have, I have a question. I have a question. Yes. Do you find, is it the more expensive the wine, the better? Or is it totally not dependent on price? Do you know what I mean? Like you can go into the store um, and get a $45 bottle of wine and a $9 bottle of wine. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, I can tell the difference. There's a difference. There's, There's a difference. A, not always. There are some great value wines that you can find, but there's definitely a difference. And one of them being most wines that are cheap like that, like a $9 cab versus a $40 cab is a $9 cab is going to be not aged in Oak. Oak's expensive. Um, and so typically it would be aged in like a stainless steel vessel and then they would just add like oak stains, oak chips to it to kind of give it the oak flavor, but it's fake. Do you know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. And then the type of oak barrel as well, like a, a brand new French oak barrel. I, I don't quote me on how much it costs, but it's expensive. It's really expensive versus maybe like a second or third run barrel would cost a little less, which means the price of your wine would also be a little less. So um, for the most part, yes, the more you pay, the better the quality, but it also sometimes it's the name, right? So like say for example, Robert Mondavi, like you're paying for the name sometimes or um, 
and don't get me wrong, like the wine is fantastic, but sometimes when people have established that kind of following, then they they can charge those prices just based off of the name. Totally. Right? It's like brand name clothing. It's like Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't mean yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's okay. very cool. Maybe I need, I, maybe I need to have a little more expensive wine. I'm always <laughs> like I'm always like, where's the twenty dollar bottle on sale? <laughs> That, that, that's not bad. Typically, I spend around twenty, fifteen to twenty three dollars on a bottle. Okay. Every once in a while, I'll splurge and buy something a little bit, little bit more. But yeah, I, I do find that wines that are under that price point are, like I said, they're they're just mm -hmm. not quite what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm a wine snob though, which is funny because my front doorstep, my mat says a wine snob and a normal person live here. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. But now I've turned my husband into a wine snob too. So I guess I two love it. Snobs live here. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean, so awesome. It's What's your kind of learning, right? Like it's just, it's fun to just like experiment and try different things. That's what we, yeah. It's just Absolutely. It's fun to try new things. I, love I was actually, I wrote that in my notes when I was uh, preparing to talk to you guys today. I wrote like exactly that. Like it's all about experimenting. It really yeah. is. It is. I love I it. Now, I, think, I think what my new goal is going to be is going to be uh, to try different region, regions of my yeah. Pinot to see which yeah. one. Yeah, honestly, have. do that. Like buy, buy like the Voga or buy like a Italian one and then yeah, go somewhere else and then you'll you'll see the, the differences and then you'll find by experimenting what you like and what you don't like and then, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's so cool. Look at you. <laughs> I've already learned I hope that helps. I'm just like so intrigued. <laughs> like, well, no, when you ask funny. me to do it, I'm like, where do I start? Like, <laughs> I know there's probably like so much stuff you could talk about. Uh, but yeah, that's that, it's really funny because that's honestly how we pick our wine bottles. So we will go to the liquor store and we'll look at all the bottles and be like, Oh, that one looks fun. <laughs> That's a cool bottle. Oh, I love that label. That's how I, we pick our wine. Sometimes I'll do that too. But I mean, yeah, it does come down to kind of learning a little bit more. And then, yeah, you'll be able to find what you really like. Um, there one, of the, one of the funny things I'm going to share, one of Paulette's little things that she does is uh, they, she is on a mission on a mission to find the cheapest bottle of wine. So what is the cheapest bottle of wine that you've gotten so far? Okay, so my husband and I were on our honeymoon in Hawaii and we made it a goal for ourselves to find the cheapest bottle of wine. And we found it at an ABC store for $4. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and you know, it wasn't terrible. And I was, I was gonna like, say, leave you with a massive hangover? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, so that's another question then. Does it matter that like do you get a worse hangover from like a not as mm. good bottle of wine? I find yes. So there was a wine that was released. I don't know if it's true or if it's in my head or whatever, but there was a wine that was released and it was seven dollars and something cents and like i said i normally don't buy wines under the 15 dollars price point but everybody there was an article in the paper that this was the greatest wine blah 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 so i bought it and i thought oh you know it tastes good oh my laptop is going to die soon anyways um <laughs> i bought it and i was like oh it tastes good you know it's decent whatever but i honestly i felt sick after drinking it i was like oh god i don't feel so good so i just yeah i I would say yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess it comes down to maybe the, the the ingredients or not the ingredients, but like just the quality's not there. So, or they might use more preservatives. Um, I was say it's not aged. Maybe it's not aged like to really get the alcohol content. So they probably added other stuff into it to. Um, for the most yeah. part, they don't really add anything to wine. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about cheap wine, but <laughs> it does make you feel like garbage. <laughs> it does. So, note to self, everybody, don't buy the $4 bottle of wine expecting it to be fantastic because oftentimes it is not. Um, <laughs> but I was very happy with myself in finding mm -hmm. 
on that, our that's honeymoon. That's amazing. It was like a goal we made for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your honeymoon, though. You would think that you'd be trying to find like the nice bottle. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we were doing cheap. we took the helicopter ride, so we needed to pinch our pennies. Oh, out. hold on. What's going on? <laughs> okay, here's the good. Sorry, my my laptop's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Taking you guys on walk. If I get disconnected, I am very sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Ooh. You'll be able to jump back in with us. Yeah. <laughs> we're very we're very fly by the seat of our pants this year. We really are. Yeah. <laughs> That's we're fun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. loving this. I'm loving learning about the wines and everything. Oh, and I do have a question. You might not be able to answer this because I think I actually asked you in uh, in uh, Toronto when I was there. But I literally cannot drink white wines. Is there a different ingredient in white wines than there is in red wines? That oh, would like I remember you asking me this now. Yeah, so. I I'm baffled by that. Actually, I really I don't know. <laughs> What's the question? Okay, so like, I get like an allergic reaction with white wine. Like really? I, like, okay, people are gonna think I'm so crazy, but like <laughs> I get like an esophageal spasm where I can't swallow anything. My breathing's fine, everything's totally fine, but I literally cannot like swallow liquids or food because I get like these spasms after I have like two sips of a white wine. So, so I won't even have it anymore because I took a sip once and I couldn't eat my dinner. I was going to say, maybe did you have a bad experience once and then it's just like in your no, head? No, it's been like multiple <laughs> times. I've tried different white wines and I kept like drinking them and then I realized that I like couldn't finish my meal. I felt sick. I was just like, why does like, I can't swallow properly. And then we, I would go to bed and it'd be okay. I got fine in the morning and then like I would have like one glass of wine. I'd have a couple sips and now I just won't even taste it because I'm scared to taste it. That is so weird. Like, I have no idea how to explain that. Normally, you, you hear people having issues with red wine because of the, the sulfites and the, the uh, yeah, it's mainly the sulfites that people have a hard time with. It gives them, like, migraines and, and right. uh, headaches and things like that. But I have never heard someone having an issue with white wine. So, so I am going to look into that further for you and <laughs> I will see if I can get back to you on an answer. I'm going to, I'm going to ask some of my friends tomorrow. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, there's my mom. They, um, my parents love wine also. And uh, ah. they're so cool. So in BC, we have an app on our phones. We have BC liquor stores mm -hmm. and you can literally scan the wine that you like and it'll, like if you find a bottle you like, you scan it, it logs it into the app on your phone. And then whenever you want to get a bottle of wine, you click it, basically you go to the app and it'll tell you if they have any in stock and which liquor store in town they have it at. We so have awesome. that here too now. Yeah. You guys have that? Yeah. It's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, Alberta but needs to get their shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Although they might, and I just don't know about it yet. So if any of our viewers out there know anything about Alberta wine, this kind of stuff, you need to hook a sister up. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, great app to have. I mean, um, as a wine consultant, I should know my wines, but I use that app all the time too. Like, it's great. It gives us tasting notes. It, yeah. it's, uh, it'll even offer um, similar suggestions. So that would be fantastic for you when you're going to look for a different Pinot Grigio. You yeah. Could scan, you could scan it and then it would tell you wines that are similar that you might like to try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or I don't know. Do you guys have um? Do you guys have like wine consultants in your stores in Alberta? Because you can use them. Ask in them. The stores, not so yeah. Much. No. Well, maybe in oh. bigger centers. I'm in a small town, so probably like no. But are you in like corner stores? Is it more like is it privatized? Is it yeah, like, like little like boutique it. stores or yeah. yeah? Okay, that would yeah, that would make a difference. So. Yeah. Whereas like here we have the BCL, which is like. They're huge and they're all over the place. Yep. And then yeah. we get all the little private ones. Yeah. <laughs> when I was uh, 19, I moved to BC for a summer. And yeah, I remember, yeah, you have the big the big liquor stores and then yeah, yeah the little ones, which yeah. is kind of cool to have both. But yeah, so I don't know. Any more questions, guys? Okay, I have one last question to like close this in. What is your favorite wine? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. brand or, or style? Ooh. Tell us know. your favorite red and your favorite white. Okay. Or do you like white? <laughs> or what? Oh, yeah. No, I, I drink all kinds of wine. Red, white, rosé, ice wine, whatever. 
what do you yeah what is your favorite like what do you love best rap um actually hold on one second hold that <laughs> i'm totally gonna buy whatever she says she likes for white wine okay that is what is so funny so when we were in toronto we went out for dinner and we're sitting there we're looking at the drink menus and she's looking at the wine menu and then we put the drink menu down and everyone's like are you ready and then we're all like yeah she's like i'm gonna get this i'm like i'm just gonna have whatever she ordered <laughs> <laughs> Except for my glass came with a big lipstick stain on it. Remember? Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. <laughs> we, <laughs> had the drink and left. we left. We didn't even eat there. That's so funny. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> I like I like all, like, I like to explore the world. I tend to like um, old world wines over new world wines. So old world is, see, now we can get into a whole other subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, old world is, you know, France. Italy, Spain, um, and then New World is California, Ontario, Chile, Argentina. Um, so I tend to gravitate more towards Old World, and Old World wines tend to be more um, earthy, more of the tobacco, leather, you know, full-bodied, um, mm. rustic, all those funky kind of um, notes, whereas New World is more, and this is just generally speaking, more fruit forward, more of a fruit bomb. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so this is Faustino. This one is... Oh, I think 18. I tried that. So there's all different um, different vintages. Um, and a vintage means the year that the grapes are harvested or the year that the wine was produced. So this one is actually a 1994 bottle, which is okay, insane. This is, another, this is another question that I have. The, is, it, is it true that the older the wine, the better? Um, yes and no, because <laughs> you can have, you can have a wine, um, that is past its prime. So it could be old, but it could also be bad. Like yeah? it could, yeah. So it could be, um, so how do you know if it's bad? Oh God, here we go. A whole nother <laughs> topic of conversation. So there's, um, wine faults. So there's just different, like different signs. Um, so actually I opened a bottle the other day and it tasted like um, nail polish remover. Ooh. So that is, yeah, or bananas. Um, so that is volatile acidity <laughs> or yeah. So basically the wine was turning to vinegar. So oh. if you had a wine that was old, for example, if you had a wine that was old, but it was past its prime, that could be happening to it. That also happens when um, bacteria might get into the bottle during bottling. Um, so that's mm -hmm. so there's specific call signs that that will tell you if a wine's bad so um <laughs> you just kind of have to know what they are so yeah. for example um cork taint is another one cork taint um smells like um wet cardboard musty basement um oh my God. And, that, it, and i will guarantee that you guys or some of you guys out there have had a bottle that has had cork taint and you wouldn't know it you just think that oh this wine tastes like shit. <laughs> but it's, it's actually wine wine. again. But it's actually it's, actually it's a wine fault. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that wine was actually a bad wine, just that bottle was bad or whatever. So yeah, there's cork taint, there's volatile acidity. Um, those are probably the two most common ones. Um there's uh oh my goodness, what else is there? I can't think right now. Anyways, yeah, that, we should do a whole nother chat on just wine. Yeah, oh, I actually no, have. Well, you're coming back, back, sister. Don't you worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we're just kind of generalizing here. So, like, if we yeah. pick a specific topic oh. another time, I'll just go right into depth with that specific topic. But, anyways, so where where are we going? If a wine's bad, the older the wine, the the yeah, better. I was yes and no. If it was really <laughs> an older vintage, is it actually better? Or not so that's good that's that's good to know that's so I would say not really yeah that's my answer. that is not like really. so funny though that question so we had uh like growing up family friends my parents family friends had this like wine cellar like kind of a wine cellar but not it's like in their garage where it was get kind of i don't know if it was heated or whatever but it was just like he just made a thing where all the bottles of wine they had this thing loaded anyways they had to they moved but they were, didn't drink a lot of the wines in there. So there was wines in there from like older than me probably. So we were all there like popping wines, having some drinks and it was the most disgusting. <laughs> there was like thick things on the bottom of the like bottles. Like we did not drink them. Like it was just like, oh my gosh. 
Yeah. We have, we have a question. I see that. And that is awesome that you asked this. So oh, I, was, that, I thought of that too when you said the cork taint. So um, people think that twist caps mean that a wine is cheap. That is absolutely false. It Ooh, actually, I love it. Yes. Yes. So they actually did a study with um, a bunch of um, old world wine guys. And um, in the old world, it's it, it seems like everyone wants the cork because it's like the, the romantic thing to do. Like you, you pop the cork, whatever. Right. So people are very, very resistant to um, twist twist caps. So they did this study. It was like a 10 year study. And these old world wineries did twist caps versus cork. And they found that the twist caps were better for preventing, yeah, cork taint. And um, because the air can't get in it, there's less of a risk for bacteria. And yeah, <laughs> but, but do you think that those wineries switched their wines to twist up? Probably no. not. No, they didn't. <laughs> because people are so resistant to it, but yeah. Yeah, Mandy, there's lots of us. Yes, Mandy, thank you for asking that question because I've often thought of that as well. Like, and even I have a hard time sometimes I'm with that. I'm like, no, I want the cork, but no, it's absolutely false. Like it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm always like when I when I'm going like out to like a friend's for dinner or something, it's just like I look at a bottle of wine, I'm like, oh I love that wine, it's so good. Oh, but it's a twist off. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna think I'm. They're gonna think I'm it's, cheap. It's all in her head, guys. Like, now you can now you can share that kind of that fact. I mean, you can you could Google oh, yeah. it and learn more about that. But yeah, there was a it was a ten year study. Wow. So they they really prove that yeah, there's nothing wrong with with the twist caps. That is so. I am, I am fascinated yeah. by your <laughs> by what by your job. I just want to do what you do. <laughs> It, it has its its perks. Yes, it does. <laughs> I went I went uh, to Nate for culinary arts. Like it's a college here in Edmonton. And uh, anyways, I did a gastronomy class at, for like a semester or whatever. And it was super fun to learn all of these things. But obviously, I did not take in what I what I learned there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this is so interesting. I'm so excited. So now when I go to the liquor store, I'm going to be a little bit more prepared on how to pick what I want to drink. Oh, perfect. Me I've too. done my job then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And anytime you guys have questions, like reach out to me anytime about that stuff. Like I, I love helping. So I ah, love it. So yeah. excited. We don't we we got one of your favorite wines though. Oh yeah, I never we never finished that. We got totally oh, yeah. sidetracked. Right. Hey, <laughs> so fast, you know. Faustino, I love Spanish wines. I love Old World. Faustino is probably my my top pick right now. This one is a 1994, which um, this one actually was surprisingly held up so well. It was still drinking, like it was it was still very fruit forward. A lot of times, um, wines that are older tend to be um, more restrained, like the fruit's kind of fallen off a little bit, and it's more secondary notes. Um, is that so a red or is that a white? This is red. This is okay. so. Um, this is again a Rioja from Spain. Uh, Tempranillo. Temp. Ah, uh, I'm butchering the name. Anyways, <laughs> I love my Fastino. I love my Spanish wines. Um, and then for whites, um, ooh, <laughs> um, I would probably say I like. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Most people in the wine world are going to hate me if I say this, but I do like Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. <laughs> but most people who are in the wine world are like, oh, Sauvignon Blanc, but I do like it. It's a very aromatic grape, um, very pungent. They say sometimes uh, cat cat pee it smells like, which is not appealing at all. But <laughs> or asparagus and, and peas, but it's all. It also can be like super like. <laughs> grapefruit and and gooseberry whatever the heck gooseberry is i don't know but <laughs> it's just it's a funky wine um i didn't i know i didn't really cover anything about health benefits um definitely red yeah red there isn't really sorry to say this but there isn't very many health benefits in a white wine but there absolutely is in the red wine that's because of um 
Yeah, what's that word? word? Reversa, reversa tall. Again, I'm butchering names. Forgive me, but <laughs> anyways, yes, there is, there is some, there are definitely health benefits of drinking red wine. But like one yeah. glass a day, kind of idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the whole bottle, unfortunately, and not the whole glass. Like, <laughs> like oh, you can have, you can have the whole glass. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, health benefits. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you can have the whole Right. Yeah, everything in moderation. That's it. <laughs> Get one of those wine glasses. It's the whole bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, white white Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. I guess I don't have a specific brand that it, that I would uh, gravitate towards, but um, yeah, maybe we'll try that out, Paulette. <laughs> I feel like maybe on our next wine live with Melissa, we should just get like a different wine from different regions and just see what the differences are. Yeah, that yeah, would be fun. Actual tasting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we have so many ideas. Now. Oh, my so yeah, there's there's so many different ways we can go with this. <laughs> oh, you're coming back, sister. Don't you? Okay. Worry. <laughs> well, thank you. Absolutely. I would love to come back. <laughs> All right, I think that we've kind of covered it all for the tastings then. All right. <laughs> the intro to Wine 101. We will be right. back with Melissa though. We're gonna have to figure this out and- Wine 102. <laughs> we'll get some more deets. We can talk about so many like little more in depth stuff. It'll be so, oh, hold on. We have one more question and then we will close oh, it out. Oh, Miss oh, Tammy. On. <laughs> What's a uh, German light you can recommend? Uh, like specific brand or just varietal? Okay, isn't, uh, and I'm going to butcher this name right now, but Gerwitz Stanimer. Gerwitz <laughs> <laughs> Treminer. Gerwitz. Oh, I just learned how to say it properly, too, and I'm butchering it myself. Gerwitz Treminer? Gerwitz Treminer? Gerwitz, yeah. <laughs> um, do you? I that's, do. That's, like, really, like, spicy and exotic fruits and and. I do, I do like it, actually. Huh. <laughs> I want yeah. to try spicy wine. Anything with spicy. <laughs> I want to drink white wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm seriously, I'm looking into that because I'm like, I have no clue. I've talked to one other person, one person in like eight years that has the same reaction. I don't yeah. remember who it is. But, <laughs> um, yeah. So, sorry, Mandy, to answer your question. Um, God, I am not well versed in German wines at all. And there's so many different um, levels of, and oh my goodness, I would have to Google how to say those words. We're <laughs> <laughs> another live on German wines, basically. Oh my God, that would be funny. <laughs> we can um, really try and say all their names. I would just say a Riesling from the Moselle, Moselle region. Um, and that's basically pretty straightforward and simple. Um, but uh, if you like sweet wines, because that's that's what German wines are all about for the most part. They're they're sweet and oh, you really like that. You really yeah. like that. Oh yeah, they they are. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, cool. Well, thank you to all of our viewers for interacting with you with us i want to do a, oh, yes, a huge cheers God. and a thank you to melissa because this was so awesome i know i learned a lot i hope everyone else learned a lot we <laughs> will have melissa back with us because this has been way too much fun cheers ah, everybody cheers thank you for joining us on today's wine live bye guys have a good night yes this has been so much fun and uh <laughs> we're gonna stick around don't leave us, but we'll chat with you after don't okay. Leave. Okay. <laughs> we will catch you on the next one, guys. <laughs>